Hi everybody, my name is Amanda and you can find me on Ravelry as Kettle and String and you can find my blog at disseminate.wordpress.com Today I would like to show you my new weaving loom. It is the middle of August 2015. I bought this loom in January, didn't move um, and get her set up until a few months later and she was completely in pieces and under my bed. Um, this loom is a Scandinavian loom, so I'm going to try the pro I'm going to try to pronounce the name correctly, but then I'll say it the way an English person would. Um, it's a Berjo Ullman loom. It's uh, it looks like Berga Ullman with a little circle over the A in Berga, um, but Berjo Ullman if I have it right. Now it is a countermarsh loom. It, um, mine is 12 shafts and 14 treadles and it has a unique system of lambs which doesn't seem to be used in any of the other um, countermarsh looms that I've seen online. Now granted this is my very first loom. I am a new weaver and so there are probably things out there that I'm unaware of and there's probably something on here that's not set up correctly. Um, because I just don't know. If you see something in this video that right, you know, raises a red flag, please let me know. I'll fix it. Please. Okay. So the reason I'm recording this video is not just to show off my loom, although that's fun. Um, when I was looking at this loom and I was trying to find information about it online, all I really found were other people asking, what do we know about this loom? So I decided that maybe it would be helpful if I showed you my loom. She is complete as far as I'm aware. She didn't have a bench with her, so I've got a bench now. Um, but other than that, I think she's complete. And I even have the um, instructions, the, the flyer that came with the loom. So I will show you that. Um, her, for briefly, she's got a history. Um, very sad history, a very lonely history. From I don't I think I'm the fourth owner. The person I bought it from wove one ra uh, one rag rug and never wove again. Um, and then I believe the loom had belonged to her mother before that, and her mom didn't really weave either. So and I believe her mother had bought it from the original owner. I wish I could have found out who the original owner was because this is. A wonderful loom. I'd love to know what it was what was woven on it. But that being said, she has been sitting in a spare bedroom for about 30 years. So now she is in a craft room and she is getting put to work at long last. So I'm not gonna blather on anymore. Let's take a look at her. There is one thing I didn't mention earlier. She is 59 inches wide. And yes, that is impressive for a first loom. Here is the beater. It's under slung. I had to buy a new reed for it. The original was rusty and I tried to clean it, but just buy a new one. Stop. It's not worth trying to clean a rusty reed, I have learned. So the cloth beam is tensioned with a ratchet and pawl. Now I know for a fact um, I believe if this, I think this is called the um, ratchet, and this is called the pawl, or this is the ratchet, I'm not entirely sure. This is original, but I definitely know this is a replacement. The original piece is actually with the loom, I've got it, and it's more round and this color it matches this color of metal so I'm assuming this is a replacement I had to rig it up with a couple of washers to get it far enough over that it would hook on the teeth but it works really well and if you're wondering what this little guy is he is a little puppet um, or a mellow person made by Creaturist on Etsy.com and he has an earth magnet in his bottom, so he just sticks right here. He's my little weaving buddy, little guardian of the loom. And the beater just passes right over him. I love him. He's cute. 
here is the brake system. It is a tension um, drum brake, I believe is what it's called. This metal cord wraps around twice here on the warp beam and is secured by a spring to the bottom. And this cord wraps around this plastic wheel. It does move, but I don't think it really moves when it's in use. That travels over the lambs, which we'll talk about in a second, and continues on to the brake here in the front on the right hand side. Now one of the things I find interesting about this loom is that the this is a horizontal countermarsh. The upper jacks are in this little case up here, or up in the castle. And I only have a four shaft um, pattern going on right now. So the rest of the upper jacks are just loosey-goosey. But they are attached with airplane wires. So this is the same stuff that would have been used, might still be used, to um, connect the controls that the pilot uses um, for the brakes and the wings of the, you know, the ailerons and stuff on the plane from the pilot to the mechanical parts on the plane. Isn't that awesome? You know, some of them um, look like they may be a little worn, but they're doing all right. Now the outside edges of the upper jacks have one of these cords going to the outside of the shafts, the upper shafts. The inside joins together here and then passes through the center of the warp and then comes down and splits apart again to work the lambs. We'll get to that in a second. Here are the treadles. I love these treadles. I've got them set up right now to every other treadle. I've got seven treadles in this pattern. I've got, um, okay, so if I can get in here and show you what's going on. These two lambs here, one is a lower lamb and one is an upper lamb. And so what happens is one of them is connected to the bottom of shaft one. And the other one is connected to the middle wires of the upper jacks. So when one, when shaft one is pulled down, one of these will drop and the other one will rise. You see, can you see if, um, where is it? There's shaft one. See it coming down, going up, coming down. So this front lamb is attached to the bottom of the shaft and the second lamb is attached to the upper jacks, which in turn are attached to the upper shaft, upper bar of shaft one. So when I hook up the treadles, these are the original metal pieces that um, came with the loom. There's a groove inside the treadle that that passes through. And so, if I want to pull down on shaft one, then I hook that to the first lamb and leave the second lamb empty. If I were to connect both of them, I wouldn't be able to move shaft one at all. And then the next two lambs are shaft two. The next two lambs are shaft three. The next two lambs are shaft four and so on. It's the exact same thing on the other side. They're just, they just split the lambs down the middle, attach them to both sides of the loom, just like that. There's a long metal rod going through all those lambs. 
This is treadle two in my pattern. And if we look at it, we can get these kind of level here. Here we go. I am asking it to pull down shaft one, raise shaft two, pull down shaft three, and raise shaft four. So this raises my second shaft and my fourth shaft, excuse me, raises my fourth shaft to lift threads on those shafts. And the one next to it is my treadle one. Sorry, camera's going all over the place, it's handheld. If I flatten these out, you can see what's going on here. So I am asking it to raise shaft one, lower shaft two, raise shaft three, and lower shaft four. So this raises threads on shafts one and three. So my treadle one and my treadle two make my basic tabby. So I hope I've explained that to where it makes sense. So what's going on with these wires, the front two wires go up and they're attaching to the bottom of the shaft. Right here, I hope you can see it because I can't see the camera screen. And then the next two wires are passing in between shaft one and shaft two, going all the way to the top. Coming all the way up here. And they're hooking up to the lambs here for shaft one. When I ask the this cord to pull down on the upper lamb, this end of the, or excuse me, the jack, this end of the jack raises up and therefore lifting shaft one. Pretty cool. You can see that they're, you know, nothing, they're not all level. And that's the nature of having um, multiple treadles pulling on the same shaft, both up and down. This is actually an echo of one of the other treadles, the way one of the treadles is hung up, or is put up. So, but when I lift, when I step on shaft one, and then I step on shaft two, that's my tabby. So even though it appears like something might be wrong, it works just fine. Show you some of the other treadles. There's treadle three. So there you can see that's the, the you know, that's kind of what's getting echoed here. There's shaft four. So I believe that's shaft six. Shaft five. I changed the pattern. I was I had and this is shaft seven. I had the um, treadles in a walking pattern, just alternating all the way across, and um, it didn't work very well for the actual weaving. I'm weaving the elegant placemats in handwoven. Um, can't remember the month or the year right now. Shaft one, sh or treadle two, three, four. Five. I have to, when I get to the end here, I really have to kind of lean in further down though. Yeah, I know my um, four, first four shafts are actually warped. You might have been wondering what's going on there. They are warped. And I will probably take them off at some point and lay them out and try to straighten them, but they're weaving just fine. So that doesn't seem to be a big deal. I've also got a little warping going on back here on the lowers. But for the most part, they're flat. And if I'm really desperate, I can um, have them replaced. 
but so the one these shafts that I'm not using they just rest here on this horizontal bar I think I've shown you everything I hope that was helpful thank you for watching talk to you later alright guys I'm just going to show you quickly here the paperwork that originally came with the loom that was handed down to me. I um, don't have a lot of battery left, so I just need to go quickly. Talks about the cable system. Um, talks about the read, but um, it is a you know the the beater is adjustable in height and then also front and back, which is very nice. It was not even when I first got it. Split lamb system. So they love that, apparently. Brake system. Ratchet system. Cloth protector. And then um, it talks about the wood. Dried maple. Metal parts are chosen to avoid rusting, etc. and so forth. If you pause the video, you could probably read that. And then <laughs> this is the assembly instructions. Um, these have seen better days. And they are typewritten, and they aren't very clear. I am very glad I had the opportunity to take the loom apart so I knew how to put it back together again. If it was in pieces, um, when I had gotten it, I don't think I would have ever figured it out. Okay, so, but that's a not, not a bad illustration, huh? This is that horizontal piece that those um, shafts that I'm not using, that's what I'm rest what they're resting on. So the bottom shaft is attached, and then the top shaft is attached up here to the upper lambs. Jacks, excuse me, the jacks. And then here it shows the upper jacks being attached to the interleaving lambs down here on the bottom. So it's an interle interleaved, interleaved system. Talks about the brake band. And if you want a copy of these, I have photocopied them. Just um, contact me on my blog. I'll post a link in the description. Um, I have contact information on my blog, and you can um, give me a contact, ask me for a copy of these instructions and the pamphlet. And I will be more than happy to send them to you.